Hey guys, what is up? Brennan here, aka Brombo, bring you guys a pretty cool video today involving turbos. I know everyone loves turbos, so you should enjoy this video. But today I'm gonna need you guys for this to pick out a turbo for me. But before I get ahead of myself, let me explain a little bit. So as you guys know, my car, a four cylinder 1.8 turbo, 180 horsepower. This car came in a 225 horsepower version also. So this is the slower version of the two. I've done a lot of things to this car. I have a whole separate video on it, an Audi TT mildless slash walk around. I'll put it right here. And I've done like 25 plus things to this car to make it as fast as I can and look as good as I can. But now I'm to the point where I have full bolt-ons, I maxed up my KO3, and there's not much I can do to make it faster unless I put a new turbo in. So today I'm gonna ask you guys to help me pick out a turbo, or if you guys are good enough, Less turbos you think would be the best for me in the comments, stuff like that. So it should be fun. Let's get started. First off, I just want to say you guys are going to be really lost if you don't know much about Audis or VWs, especially the turbo names. So it's okay, just look them up, but they have special names. I'll be using those names a lot. So just so you guys know, if I say KO3, KO4, but these are just really common turbo names, and it's not very difficult. That's just the name of the turbo. Hard to explain, but just look it up. It's really easy to learn. Also, this is way down the road. I'm talking like way down the road. This is even later than wheels, which you guys will never think will happen, but it will. This is way later than that even. I just want to set a goal and then get to that and then I can make this car fast. So I just want to get everything situated and have a plan of what I'm going to get for this car and uh, make this build as good as I can make it. So to start, first off, I want to add this piece of paper because I have a lot of numbers on here that involve the turbo horsepower, torque, and I want to get everything confused and say wrong information. And then everyone just gets mad at me in the comments because that's what seems to happen on my earlier videos and I'm trying to prevent that. So. I'll be looking at this paper a lot, I'm sorry. But to begin, my car has a KO3 S Turbo. Basically this came on the 180 horsepower Jettas, Golfs, the Audi TTs, the lower end horsepower version of them. Those maxed out with full bolt-ons I would say, make about 220 wheel horsepower and 250 wheel torque. And I mean wheel, not crank. 180 horsepower, oh 220, you only get 40 horsepower out of it. No, that's to the crank 180 horsepower. So like to the crank, you know, 180 horsepower stock the Audi TT makes, probably to the crank, it makes about like 155, 160 maybe, I'm not even sure. So you know, it's a good 70 horsepower you get from bolt-ons, which is really, really good. But I maxed it out, like I said, I put full bolt-ons on, downpipe, tune, colder intake, turbo inlet pipe, except an intercooler. I don't know if intercooler is really full bolt-ons, but basically I maxed the turbo out. If I put an upgrade to it, it won't help the turbo. It won't make the car faster, what I'm trying to say. So I have to upgrade the turbo before I can upgrade more parts, before I can get actual horsepower. So next, the K0401. Something I thought was on the 225 horsepower Audi TT, but this is a different K0401. This is a little bit smaller. This makes about 240 wheel horsepower and 280 wheel torque. So basically you're only getting 20 horsepower and about 30 torque, which in my opinion is way not worth it for how much you're spending on this turbo and labor if you get it installed. The turbo alone is about $2,000 and for installation of labor, I'm guessing about $500. So you're spending like $2,500 to get 20 horsepower and 30 foot-pounds of torque. There's no point of that at all. I was actually going to do that before I did more research luckily because I thought that was the turbo that was on the 225 Audi TT. The turbo that's on the Audi TT 225 is actually a KO4-022. These turbos are like impossible to find. I looked on eBay, I looked around everywhere to find this turbo, even if it doesn't come with lines or anything. I just want the turbo. And they are very, very hard to find for some reason. I'm not sure why, I think it's because it's such a good turbo if you can find them. Reason is, with these turbos, the KO4001 or the KO4022, so you do not have to reconfigure your engine, meaning you can just put this turbo in the exact same place that my KO3 is right now and get gains out of it right away. Where with these turbos I'm about to list that I might potentially get, I have to reconfigure my engine bay. Meaning I have to position the turbo in a different area. It'll come with piping to connect to my downpipe. It'll come with more piping to connect to my colder intake. Cause the turbo is gonna be up more instead of more down on the engine. So it's a lot more labor consistent and it's just a lot more work. So what's nice about this K04022 is you get a lot of horsepower out of it, but you don't have to reconfigure your engine. So with the K04022, you make about 260 wheel horsepower and 300 wheel torque. Even though still that's only 40 more horsepower and 50 torque, that's still quite a bit, but you're still spending a lot of money. But with that, like any other turbo, except probably the K04001, you have to upgrade the injectors to the 386cc, which is in the 225 Audi TT. 
and you would have to upgrade your mass airflow sensor or housing. That's the part that connects to the colder intake filter directly, just so it can get enough air to breathe, and then the fuel jack here so it can get enough fuel. Pretty common. Also, what about these KL4 turbos is they're really good low end. They make a lot of torque, meaning they make basically more torque than they make horsepower, which is really fun actually, because when you get in the gas, you get on it right away, it pushes you back. But with these upgrade turbos, after the KO4, like the ATPs, the Eliminator turbos, all stuff like that, get the power up high so you won't get the instant torque to push you back in your seat. It'll come later, which is kind of nice, I guess. Maybe because I'm not used to it, because with this car and all KO turbos, all the power ends at like 5,500 RPMs, which kind of sucks because you still have about 1,500 RPMs to go. Those turbos, very easy to install, make really good low on torque, but they don't make the most horsepower, which is a kind of a bummer because you're spending so much money and you're getting only like 50 horsepower out of it. Now to the GT turbos. This is what the turbos I was considering getting. They're a lot bigger, but you need to reconfigure your engine. And obviously, I'm not going to put this turbo in myself, so I'd have to get this done and it's going to cost a lot more money to do that. And with all these turbos, you have to put fuel injectors, bigger mass airflow sensor housing, intercooler, bigger turbo inlet pipe even, because this little tube that I have on my turbo now won't fit on this big turbo. So I need a new turbo inlet pipe even. And the injectors have to be bigger. So instead of like a 386 cc, I need like a 440 cc or even higher than that, depending on how big I go for this GT turbo. So I was considering a GT28 RS. The reason I'm going with this turbo, if you guys didn't know, it's not the biggest turbo, but it's not the smallest turbo. But the thing is with the Audi TT, 180 is it doesn't have forged internals like the 225. So therefore, it's more likely to blow when you put more power to it. So people say when you get to about 320 wheel horsepower, that's when you're gonna have to start rebuilding your engine. No higher than that. Basically, the rods start to go first because that's the weakest part. So if you place the rods, you can go a lot higher actually. You can keep the stock pistons and everything like that. You just need to replace the rods, which I do definitely don't wanna do right now because that's even more money. They have to rip apart your engine and that bill is super, super high. So therefore, I wanna say under 320 wheel horsepower. 320 wheel horsepower too is a lot actually, especially with the slight of a car. So therefore, the GT28 RS makes 320 wheel horsepower exactly full bolt-ons. So that means after I put in the fuel injectors, the intercooler, the bigger mass airflow housing, bigger turbo inlet pipe, it should max out at 320 wheel horsepower. So I'm exactly at that point where I don't have to rebuild my engine, but at the same time, it is a little scary. And it should make about 350 foot-pound torque, and that's to the wheels also. So that's a crazy amount of torque also. So this car would be pretty, pretty quick after using that turbo, and I would not have to rebuild my engine. Maybe after using the car for a while, it could blow up and I could rebuild it, put forged pistons and rods in, which I really want to do, and I don't have to worry about it in the future. But the bad thing, like I said, about this turbo is it's $2,000. And that's just for the turbo and the piping connected to the stock downpipe and to the stock turbo and the pipe. So it doesn't come with much. So obviously then you also have to add to it the fuel injectors, the inner cooler, the mass airflow housing, and the turbo and the pipe. After all that, you come down to like $3,800. Then you have labor, which is going to be more expensive too because they have to do a custom setup basically. So this is a pretty expensive bill. I'm thinking I might have priced the other options a little high, but I'm thinking at the end of everything about $4,200, which is a lot, a lot of money. Considering I'm only getting 100 more horsepower than my car right now, which is I guess a lot, and that's especially to the wheels. So 100 more wheel horsepower, quite a bit, but still $4,200. Is it worth it? I feel like I could do the injectors and all the other stuff by myself, but not the turbo itself. So that would save me some money on labor, but still like, do I do this or do I not? So I want you guys to help me out because that's the thing. I want to see if you guys know any turbos that I can put in or find me some ko 4022s that can potentially put in this just to save me the most money I can. Because obviously you guys won't see on the channel for a while until I save up this money. So if you guys could give me some suggestions down in the comments below, I would appreciate it a ton. Or if you guys know turbos better than the GT28 RS or something a little bit better. If you guys are still here after me talking about this in this very boring scenery with uh, my voice, which is super annoying. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to talk about this car because a lot of you guys asked about putting a bigger turbo in. Some people don't even think I have a turbo on this car, which is fine, I guess. I'll just, I always tell them I have a turbo. Then they ask the horsepower and it's, yeah. But comment below turbos I could potentially get, or if you guys have just general things to tell me about it, information, I would deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate it. So if you guys enjoyed this, 
throw down a like, happy that I'm considering getting a bigger turbo even though it's way down the road, and hit subscribe below and the little bell so you know when I upload videos of the Lamborghini Gallardo even, the Audi TT, Jeep Wrangler, and Charger RT. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm sorry for this very boring video, but I had a lot of information I had to get to you guys. So, see you later. Peace out.